All right, guys, so I'm going to show you guys how to do a real quick um, animation on this arm that you guys are supposed to animate this week. And um, I'm going to show you through 14 frames how to go ahead and set up your arm to move this can from one side of the screen to the other. Uh, the first thing you want to make sure that you do is go up to your window graph editor and make sure that you have everything selected. Grab everything, make sure that it is in set tangents. Before you actually animate your scene, when you go into your preferences window, go to animation, change this to flat, stepped, and save. That way this animation will, will be in stepped keyframes, so you don't have to worry about any kind of weird stuff happening at first. And right now what I've already done here is I've went through and I set up the arm to have it go from one side to the other and back very simple animation. I'll go ahead and show you how I did this. First frame I just set a keyframe for everything on the arm on the robot arm. Change the rotation on the shoulder to the 35 and on the elbow to negative 35 and left these at zero. Frame three I just rotated on the base root by negative 90 degrees. On frame 4, increase that rotation on there to negative 180. I just copied this this pose over to frame 5, this time increasing the claws to a value of 25. Then I dropped it down. On the shoulder it's set to 0. On the elbow it's set to 0 and the claws are still set to, neg to 25. On frame 7 it clamps around the can with the claw control set to 13. Frame 8 moves back up to 35 on the shoulder and negative 35 on the elbow. Then on frame 9 I just reduce the value of rotate y on the root to negative 90 and then reduced the root to 0 for a full turn back towards the platform. Frame 11 I dropped this down to 19 and this to negative 19. That will put the can right above the surface of this block over here. And then on frame 12, just copied the entire arm pose that was on 11. Just increased the claws to 25 to open to release the can. And then increased the shoulder back to 35 and the elbow to negative 35. And then on 14, just copied the whole pose from 13 over 14. This time just closing the hands back to zero. Now the thing we need to make sure we set up now is our locator. So if you go to create, locator, press R to get your scale tools, grab the yellow box in the center to increase the size of your locator. You should see some green protrusions come from the root of your arm. You're going to left click the wrist control curve and then shift select the locator. Make sure that you're in your animation drop down menu. You go to constrain, parent, go to the options box, maintain offset, turn that off for this point because you don't want to have this offset. Click add. You should go to the center of your control circle. You're going to click the locator and shift select the can. And make sure you select the curve, the control curve on the can. Go to constrain options box, click maintain offset. That's going to allow to maintain this distance between the locator and the control curve of that can. Click add. Now you 
need to make sure you go back to frame one. Select your can, not your locator, just your can, and hit S. Now's a good time to go ahead and go up to your pick mask, which is these guys up here, and go ahead and turn off everything with the exception of your curve control. That way you can only select these and nothing else. Also go to show and turn off locator so you can't accidentally select it if your pick mask is turned on. So now we're going to work on the can here <coughs> by hitting S, you would open up this blend parent control. And what we want to do here is actually turn this on and this other one down at the bottom in the can parent constraint. And turn that one. That's me. To off. That way the can scoots back over. And you're going to select those two. Right click on them, key selected, and you should have a frame show up with a red key. Now we're going to go over to 6, and we want to set these keys again on frame 6. On frame 7, we're going to change this to 1 and 1. Then you're going to select them both again, right click, key selected. Now what you have is the guy picks up the can, but now he continues carrying it, and we need to make sure that he releases it. So on frame 11, I'm going to set this again, one and one, right click, right click, key selected. Now on frame 12, we need to have him release it, but there's a trick to this. You can't just put one and zero, because it's going to put it back over here. We want to have it completely release it, so it keeps it in the area that it dropped it off. I'll select both of those controls again, key selected. And now as you see, it picks it up, drops it, and it sinks back down. We don't want it to do that, we want it to stay in this position. So if you go to frame 11, with your can selected, go to constrain, Set rest position. Now that's that is its new rested position for the rest of the animation. <clears throat> However, you'll know in the beginning, you'll notice in the beginning, well, the set position was set not only for that one spot, but for the whole animation. Well you need to go back to frame seven. Now, we can move over, pick up the can, and then drop it off. And now you have made an animation, left click dragging, moving through, picking up your can, and dropping it off, and completely letting go of it, and leaving it where you wanted it to. Now, as far as the timing and spacing for everything is concerned, that's going to be up to you and how you feel you want it to be set up. Make sure that you have everything selected and you can move all of these out either by shift selecting keys and middle mouse dragging and setting up your timing that way or you can click shift click grab the arrow on the far right hand side and drag these out. As I stated in our Q&A if you do scale them out in the fashion that I'm showing you right here. You really need to make sure that you go back into your graph editor with all of those selected, go into your graph editor, click F so make sure you see everything select everything, go to edit, snap. You should see a bunch of adjustment going on with all of your keys in your graph editor. 
when you scale these out, they don't go to whole frames. They go to frames with decimal points, which can mess up your scene. By clicking snap, it now is set up in all the appropriate locations. Or on whole frames. And you can just click your can find out where pick it up. It's on frame forty six. So we're going to drop that on frame forty six. And then drops it off. on that. So we want to go ahead and go back into here. Verify that our stuff is set up the way we want it to. In this case it's not. That should lift it. If you have anything like this happen, it's a good idea to go back into your graph editor for that particular item. Do some cleanup. And each of the this is where you're going to find that tool. Find the constraint for that. And as you can see, this is still set to zero. Or I'm sorry, set to one. Go ahead and delete that out. This one out. That way, it stay where it's supposed to. I'm actually doing the wrong one. I'm going to keep it at one and not have it bounce to zero. Now it should go through, pick it up, and drop it, and leave this connection. Remember that the easiest way to set up your arm control when I went through all those values is to make sure that you go into your script editor, hit your clear all button, select all of the controls of your arm, hit your S key. In this case, I'm not going to hit S, but you want to hit your S key so you can have that key set in there. If you don't want to have that, you don't have to. You can even shift select if you can. Select everything. Control Z or Command C. Left click into the Mel area below that. And hit Command V or Control V to copy it down there. Go file. Save script to shelf. And rename the button. This name and putting all control. And OK. And then you'll see it pop up in your whichever one of these you have open. Um, I suggest you do make a new shelf for yourself so you can have those show up in an easier fashion. And then just left click outside of your object and then click it to make sure that everything does get selected. Alright, guys, if you have any questions uh, pertaining to how to do the parenting and if it's not working for you uh, please just give me a message and I will get with you and uh, we'll get that squared away so you have yourself some fun with this one I know I had some fun and I will talk to you again here next Tuesday